here at the UGIRE's um, conference, uh, Exhibition Rado. And why I am specifically here is I'm presenting what the university call Project Alpha. It's our uh, project where we join together education with virtual reality, augmented reality, and a, and a few other cool features that deal with the uh, technologization of, um, techno of education. So basically, um, in front of the computers right now, what we have are two what we call experiences. One of them is a fighter jet that the US uses. And what we could use that for is training uh, both the military and aeronautical engineers on that technology. Uh, why is it important? For us to get that jet in the first place, it costs a couple billion dollars, which I don't think that we have. And then to get the people who know about it, uh, it costs money as well. With the system, we could literally tear it apart with the click of a button and each part is uh, meticulously modeled to resemble and look exactly like and work exactly like the um, the real thing. The other one, if I have the cross section of a brain, uh, with that, you know, we could tear the brain apart without actually having to be the person that do, uh, gets their brain tear, torn apart, I guess. Uh, uh, and it doesn't stop there, as a matter of fact, there is a bunch of AI features that is integrated into the experiences. And the, I guess the entire goal with this technology is that what we can do is make sure that each student learns at a pace that's designed for them. Because with the system, you could keep going back over and over and over a lesson until you get it. So one of the experiences that we're t testing with that, uh, that uh, structure is uh, plumbing. So the first lesson, basically you have all the pipes and fittings. You have to be able to identify them accurately before you can move on to the next lesson. And the next lesson, there is uh, the, the, a sink setup. Basically, with all the pipes and fittings, there you have to be able to identify why this pipe, this fitting was put together, and then from there you move on. So there's no need for us to have this um, classroom that teaches at the, the slowest child's rate or the fastest child's rate or, or median rate, but instead each person, each student could learn at their own rate. Today here we are displaying our, um, our initiative that we're trying to follow that the president has uh, initiated. Um, trying to reduce the use of imported produce by 25 percent by 2025. So here today we took non-traditional gluten-free flours and we incorporated into bread making to basically show customers that are you don't have to rely on wheat flour, which is um, imported so much. You can incorporate our locally produced and manufactured products. Like for instance, you can take rice flour and incorporate it to make rice flour bread. You can take cassava flour which makes a really nice bread and you can have cassava bread. We also have um, sweet potato bread here. The University of Guyana insists that all students, both undergraduate and others, every single program must have a, a, a research component. So we have established many years ago under a different vice chancellor an office for undergraduate research. And that office produces a research seminar annually or biannually to showcase the undergraduate research of our students. And those students also travel to other parts of the world uh, and have won competitions, etc. Events like these are amazing. I think they're very critical for the Ghana today because we're accelerating at a rapid pace. I think these events really help us to connect with not only the young people but with just general citizens of Ghana to really understand what's happening in Ghana. So the robot was built to enter the FGC challenge for its global challenge. As Jaden mentioned, STEM Ghana focuses on sustainability and other real world practice, um, other real world problems. And this year our main focus was building a robot to capture two balls, one blue and one green, representing food and water. In the upcoming years, we might have to rely very heavily on services that we can provide to help us fill any funding gaps that might arise. And so we have labs that test for water, that test for soil, that test for concrete, um, we do other things in research. We could do psychometric evaluations, counseling, other types of research, historical research. There is so much that's happening in the country, at the university, in the region, and in the world. 
that research and innovation has to answer and has to fill those gaps and has to help us solve those problems. 